Hey guys, it's Em here. Welcome back to my channel at Grace's Corner. I'm so happy that you tuned in. Um, today is an exciting video, kind of. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to show you a tutorial of how I made this beautiful goddess pendant with um, a pink agate uh, druzy. Uh, yeah, so if you want to see how I did it, how I made it, definitely keep watching. And if you like what you see, um, uh, hit the subscribe button down below and leave a comment. And tell me what you guys um, have made or are thinking about making because I'm so, I'm so excited to hear about it. Um, so thank you so much and let's get to the video. Hi everyone. So, um... Today we're going to, as I stated before, make a uh, goddess pendant. Um, these are co a couple of the materials we're going to be using today. Um, I've already rolled out the clay I wanted to use. Um, and these are just some of the molds we're going to be uh, using as well. This is to glaze our project afterwards. And this is to actually bake. Um, it's a Sculpey Bacon Bond um, to actually adhere some of the things we're going to be putting onto our base clip. So all of this is Sculpey 3. Um, I'm using today a uh, Druzy. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't know if I can, if the camera would focus, but it's a, it's a really pretty pendant uh, or should I say piece. But yeah, so without further ado, let's get into this video. So I'm just going to clear up some things. Put these on the side for now. All right, so this is going to be our base. Now I rolled this bigger than pretty much what I need only because I don't know how big the project is going to turn out to be. So I have myself a big, uh, pretty much flat base um, and I've chosen, I've actually mixed um, pearl Sculpey with, um, with a bit of beige for the face. So I am going to use this Sculpey face mold and we are going to be using this particular mold um, for the face. And that's where the cutter is going to come in because we're going to be taking down some of that. So I'm just gently, slowly pushing it in. These pendants come out really, really cute. Um, and they're very popular. So you see how that almost fits perfectly in there. Um, and you want to make sure that your mold is pretty, pretty clean. Um, so you don't have to like clean it afterwards. It just saves you a lot of time. Now I'm not worrying how even the back is only because nobody's really gonna see that. So we're just shaving down so it's pretty much flat. And I always save my scrap clay because we can always use it later for a different project. But I'm sorry about the sirens. <coughs> So I live in New York City and pretty much there's always something going on here. Um, but yeah, okay. So now that we have that, we're just gently gonna peel off. We'll put this mold to the side. And this is pretty much how her face is turning out to be. Um, I forgot to add that with the mold, I do like to just shaping up the features a little bit more so I don't know if you can see but her face um her face is like the nose is not really defined the eyes could be a little bit more um uh like defined as well so what we're gonna be doing is kind of like just shaping how I do that so let me just zoom in a little bit and you can probably see how, yeah, better. So we're going to, and this is not like a, this is not like a definitely, I wanna take like the thinner part of this ball tool. It's not a difficult process. You're gonna lightly press 
down, not scraping, but down into the face to make the eyes a little more defined. And you're gonna do the same. Sorry about the pitter pattering, it was raining. So it's really hard to make a video and uh, without the sound of the rain. So yeah, um, pretty much doing that. Uh, if you see the nose right here, what I wanna do is kinda make it a little more defined and so I am pressing up and out and I'm going on a side angle to do the same for the other. So now if you can see a little bit better, she looks a little slightly more defined. I don't know if you can tell. But you can you see the nose and the eyes, they look just a little bit more deep. You can do the same with the mouth, but I'm not too concerned with it because I am going to be using this chalk to paint her lips and cheek. Okay, so now that we have that, we are going to be placing her actually right here. I'm going to flip this over. The hair is probably, I would say, the biggest part, right? I would say it takes up the most space. So yeah, you can even define the, the face as well, bring it slightly in, um, just going in with the cheekbones, uh, yeah, just to, to have a little bit more shape. So I like that. So I am going to be taking a brush and I'm telling you, this lasts a really long, long, long time. Um, so yeah, you can see how old it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm just gonna be digging into this <laughs> with my little scraper thingy. Um, telling you this, this, I think I've had this for like three years and I've been working and, and you really don't need a lot. I've been working with clay for a while and this never fails me. So what this is gonna do, it's like liquid clay. It's going to bake this right on to the back surface. And I've rolled this out in a four setting because the, pen, the um, pendant is going to be, or the necklace is going to be a uh, slight heavier and I don't want it to be that heavy. So I did roll this out on a slightly thinner setting. If you need to, if you know your pendant's not gonna be that heavy, um, then definitely roll it on a thicker setting for uh, stability. So yeah, so that's what we've done. We're gonna put this to the side. Okay, oh, sorry. So yeah, all right. So now um, that we have that, I do want to, um, actually, um, I forgot to add that I do use Q-tips and some alcohol really quickly just to clean up the face just a little bit, just a little bit. So we're going to do that very gently, very, very gently. Now I do have this cabochon here. I'm debating um, if I should add it to the piece, but we will see. Very, very nice. Okay. So now that we've cleaned up that piece, we are going to be setting our stone. And I like it to go downward only because if it goes upward this way, it kind of when you're creating the hair, it's gonna create an odd shape. And I like things to come down, almost like an upside down teardrop. So I am gonna be placing this right here, um, right there. And I'm not gonna glue it on just yet because I do wanna see the placement of the other things. Um, so I do have right here, and all these clays, um, these rolled up have been conditioned and what I mean by conditioned is that they've been kind of mushed around um, and softened and that really helps uh, the process of just really you know 
um, getting it to, to actually stay where you want it. So I kind of want, I'm going to be using this one. So, um, and I forgot to mention, um, not so fun fact. I accidentally, when I was first working with clay, I accidentally um, left clay in here. And something about the polymers in the clay will eat your mold. I had no idea. I had no idea of this. And so when I did that and I went to remove the piece, I found out it literally ate away at my mold. And I was like, oh crap. I was like, oh my gosh. But yeah, so we're gonna gently, um, I got these molds, I forget the company, I'll tell you in a few, or maybe uh, I'll list it in the description below. These are really, really cool. Um, some of these patterns are excellent. So yeah, so that's kind of like the idea. This has some green in it, I don't mind it, but if you do have a problem with that, what you can do, where you cut it, where it's clean, you can just reshape it. You can just reshape it. So we'll do that for the sake of this video. It just helps to have like clean hands or wipes on hand because um, it really helps to, you know, keep your pieces from having to buff them and sand them later. Um, so we're just gonna take off that top layer right there. And then slowly like pull it pull it from the side All right I'm gonna pull it pull it pull it you're gonna press that aside that side has a little hole so we don't want that perfect if your clay is too soft it can like adhere to the mold making it really like this clay is really soft so I'm being very, very gentle and very delicate with it. Okay, so now we have our flower, which I think is so pretty. And I've in the past added glitter to the clay to give it more of a pop. But really for this pendant, I want this to like be like the focus and the face. So I'm not gonna do that this time. So we have our flower. And the reason why I make the flower also is because I want to be able to hold this pendant as well. The glue would do a great job of it, but I do want to be able to also add that extra stability as well as texture and design. So that's why I pretty much make that. And then we're going to be adding some beautiful leaves. So I'm thinking, um, these are really cool. All right, we'll do some basics. We'll do some basic leaves. So, oh, look at that. <laughs> that was too much. Sometimes sizing helps as well. If you size the clay the right way, then you really don't have to like do a lot of cutting. But yeah. So I got some green Sculpey. We're going to be cutting this. Perfect. I like to, you can also like give the mold like a little like push so it helps break apart that clay. So yeah, I'm just gonna pull that to the side and we're going to make um, a couple more. So we'll do that four more times. La la la. So guys, yeah. Um, when I started working with clay, like literally, I had no idea. Oh my God, okay, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, this, I keep this by me all the time. Look at this, look at these, oh my gosh. Um, these are the first things I've ever made. I was making um, my dog, I was trying to make my dog and my boyfriend had gotten me a little clay, um, little sample. Um, and I just love them so much and I this was by hand no mold you could see fingerprints in it um, 
yeah so i keep these little guys with me um by my art table for like inspiration also to remind me how much i've grown but yeah um i just thought i'd show you this um very very cute but yeah so when i first started crafting i really had no no idea like kind of like what to do and everything i i did pick up was watching other people um and then eventually i formed my own technique like my own way of doing things um sometimes i do things freehand like i would mold things freehand and then other times um it's just easier to have molds like this because it saves a lot of time but you can mold these leaves by hand if you don't have a mold um definitely not a big deal um and it also helps you to practice your skills um when working with clay so so yeah this is our last leaf guys okay bear with me um so we're just gonna be doing that da, da, da. pull it out trying to do this you know fairly quickly um, but I actually want, I, I, the reason why I'm showing you each process is because I don't want, um, um, to like speed through it. Cause some of this actually takes like thinking, precision, um, and thought behind it. Um, so yeah. So we're going to take, oh, wrong thing. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Um, it's like 11 o'clock at night right now and girl is tired girl is tired but she's loving what she does and they say if you love what you do it never feels like work so give that a nice little press right there beautiful it's gonna hold that right into place okay we're gonna take some more glue some more bacon bond. We're gonna be first placing our leaves. So I'm gonna place these actually inward. So I'm gonna be doing, okay, 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 okay. Nice, nice, nice. Do this again. Get a little, little. Sorry, I wasn't in the frame. Um, we're just gonna be doing that. Remember, this is gonna take a little, a little patience. Um, oops, I did this the wrong way. Okay. Actually, you know what? This is why. That's why I say, because I'm. We may not need all the leaves. We may not need all of them. So we're just gonna position them down, 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 down. It's cute. And I'm trying to position them close, so when we put our flower, our flower, flower. It's not an issue. Okay, so we're going to be taking this again, putting our, whoop, this is a messy process. Okay, we're gonna put some more bacon bond on that. You don't need a lot. Okay, so see how it's covering up those leaves? We want to adjust that and I like it because it's very, very forgiving. So we're going to place that there a little higher, right? I'm just going to move this a little higher. And we'll just push that down right there. And I like to bend the flower. I'm gonna take this little cabochon, put it right in the middle, add a little, little, little pizzazz. Little 
pavias. And so I'll just take my ball tool here and slightly push. Push, push, push. So it's like nicely in there. Awesome. So now that we have that all set up, I do um, want to begin. Let me just clean this up a little. I do want to begin on the awesome hair. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, I just want to clean this little guy up. Very, very cute. Okay, so we are going to be taking this and moving it um, to the side. Uh, well, a little farther off to the side. <laughs> And then we're going to be working on the hair. Um, so for this, I pretty much, it's easier if I had like a tile to work with, but I'm actually going to be literally braiding her hair. So you can just roll this out the long way, or you can take something flat. Let's just say this, this is a really bad example. It usually works with like a piece of glass or tile. And you can just begin rolling. Actually, this isn't that bad. Rolling this way. You see how that comes out? We want some long pieces, long, thin pieces. If you had like a strudel, that could work as well. So, a strudel is like something where you push clay and all these little strings come out. I don't have that, um, but. We are going to make do and that's why I say you can always like craft with like what you have um, because that's the fun part so yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just thin this out a little bit testing the length so we're gonna take our little piece right here you can actually just leave it and have her hair flowing like that or we can braid which is kind of what i really really want to do now if you see the section right here um if i braid it that's going to pretty much come up to here so i definitely want to bring this out longer so that's what we're going to be doing and you see how i'm moving that piece and those pieces that we've placed down they're not going anywhere so that's pretty much really cool because that bacon bond really, really works. Um, so I'm going to do this a couple more times, three more times, and we'll come back, okay? All right. All right. So now I have my three long pieces right here, right here, right here. Um, so you can see they are so things are getting messy. Okay. So what I'm going to do now the ends we don't have to worry about. And I like working with this particular clay because it's just really, really good. Like, like the, it's shiny, it's durable. Um, there's certain clays like Sculpey 2 that are softer, that are harder to work with, with this particular type of braiding. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the ends and I'm going to be smushing them together. Now these, these uh, uh, little long strips of clay, they're not even, and that's okay, they're not even but um, you could just stick that to the surface. But, you know, I think what makes it very unique and real is that, you know, our hair is not always even all the time. So, you know, it's to each his own, which is why, you know, when you make a pendant, it's just really, um, it's really hard to make the exact same one. It's just insane. You're gonna flip that over. So we're literally, literally, literally braiding and pressing along the sides. Like you don't wanna be, you can be very gentle with this. Like I feel like 
but you don't want to be you want it to get a nice solid braid for this and I'm I'm literally just braiding this down if I'm lifting up imagine if I had like real hair with this this would be crazy but then I think that'll be like a little uh freaky you know like voodoo doll type status I don't know I'm just ranting anyways so we're gonna be braiding this all the way down I press a little bit just so it could stick to each other bring that up down up over I swear clay is very very forgiving you can always go back and redo pretty much what you've started see you see how that's getting a little loose right there that's because I didn't pull this and it's not gonna be perfect but that's okay we're not going for perfection we're going for uniqueness and greatness that's what we're doing here that's what we're doing we're doing that want them to be tight but not too tight so yeah I've seen uh, tutorials on YouTube of other people's goddess pendants like nobody nobody taught me this like how to braid you know it's all by trial and ever error and experimentation and just feeling what feels right and you know that's the fun part about it yeah and I love working with clay because it really just it soothes me it really does like this maybe I'll do like a story time one day like if you want to hear about it but um like I said my boyfriend got me some clay and I was I first thing I ever made was those dogs and um you know I found so much it took me four hours by the way to make those dogs <laughs> but it took it took um it took away a lot of stress you know I, I do work with people for a living um, helping others and sometimes you know our professions can be very emotionally and mentally draining and I found that for me a great outlet um, a great hobby was working with clay um, clay doesn't yell doesn't talk back and you know like it's just so peaceful um, same thing as knitting. I don't knit, but I know people who do and find a lot of joy and peace in taking all that pent up um, energy um, and using it to something more constructive. Um, so, or maybe I could tell you the story now while I'm doing this, but, or some of it. So yeah, I started working with clay simply as like a hobby, self care. It was for my own personal um, jewelry making. I wear the things that I make. I love it. It was special to me. Um, and, you know, it came to a point where, where I was making so much things. Like, I just love to do it. I would be sitting working with Clay for six hours uh, the whole weekend. So it came to the point where I just simply loved it so much that... I had so much stuff. Like I was not gonna wear 10 dragon eyes. I was not gonna wear, you know, um, 20 goddess pendants, um, you know, earrings. You know, I was making like 20, 30, 40 pairs of earrings and um, all different styles. And, you know, I love them. I love mixing matching. I swear I had a pair of jewelry and earrings for every um, occasion that I was making. Um, so I came to the point where, where I was like, okay, this can't just sit here. I'm doing a disservice to the jewelry that I've been making. And one of my friends, um, which I've been trying to tell her to start a YouTube channel, I'm pinching the ends right here, um, does a lot of vending and craft fairs and things. And um, so what I'm gonna be doing is pretty much pushing down on the size to make it a tighter braid. 
So yeah, she invited me to sell some of my stuff. I think I brought out 15 pieces and those pieces that she allowed me to put on her table um, sold, I think I made around 70 bucks, 60 or 70 bucks. And I there was some fear associated with that because I didn't know I'm not a seller, like, or well, wasn't, um, or didn't have any experience with that. And so I was very, very apprehensive about getting my stuff out there. I didn't have a name for myself, but everyone was telling me how beautiful my stuff was. So here's the braid. Um, now if you can see that, but it came out so lovely. I don't know if you can see that. It's a long braid. And you can do this with like bracelets and you know, like look how awesome that would be if you can wrap this around like a base um, and do that. But yeah, this is gonna be her hair. Um, so it's pretty, pretty long um, and it's very, very even. Um, you really wanna be patient with it as well. All right, so now that we have our braid, we're going to be feeling out how it's going to look on the pendant. Now I am going to cut this braid, but for the sake of the length, I do want to see what I'm working with. Um, I want it to close in, like hug that flower as well. I was going to do this for her hair, but I think because the braid is really long, I think we can just leave it at that so yeah and I don't want to hide those little leaves either hmm this is the the fun part of trying to figure out what's the best way to make this work so 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 you just play around with it see so I see this would be like my cutoff. You can make it shorter, like you can probably have it here, right? Like cut off the braid right here. Um, let's see. You can cut it off like right here and make it like shorter, longer. But I think I want the longness of it. So I'm gonna be taking that. I'm gonna mark it. So right here, doot, and right here. Doot, right? So I marked it. Now, what are we gonna be doing is we're gonna cut all that excess off. And we're gonna be cutting this excess off. Doot, right? So now we have our cut braid. And what I'm going to do is be pinching, pinching together. Slightly. Okay, and we're going to do that same for the other side. Okay. Great. Doesn't have to be perfect. You could even, maybe I'll, I'll do that in this video. Can make like little like, like headbands. Make sure it's even. Wanna make sure, wanna make sure. Right? That's pretty cute. I'm just gonna probably tighten this one up a little bit. This one up a little bit. And that can definitely work. Now I'm a little 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 indecisive about the placement of the leaves. So I do want to see how if I could adjust it better. Right here, going over her hair. Kind of like a slight upside down flower. And you know what? I think I'm going to do that because I want these beautiful leaves to be seen. Um, and I do also want stability for her hair. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. So right here, make sure 
perfect. This cute little flower will go right there. You can even hide the ends of her hair under here. So I don't know if you can see that. Um, and if you want to add a little stability, you can. Um, you can just add like a piece of uh, clay. Nobody's going to see this and it matches her hair. So if you just want to throw that in there, get a little, you know, it's going to add stability to the pendant um, as well as give a nice base for the hair. Okay, so then we're going to take our flower and we're going to end it right there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, little straggled dog here. Oh, well, we'll remove that later. So yeah, now you get to play around with it a little bit. I like to hug the face and have everyone see the braid, which is cute. And you can compress it. It's not gonna ruin the shape or anything. If you see any smudges, you could just buff that out. Um, I do want to show her face though. Um, and maybe, maybe I want to, add, you can add like a little charm here, which I might, I just might do because I think it'll add a little pizzazz. A little pizzazz to it. Just gotta find, oh, I have a purple one. Oh, this will be cute. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So we have that. We're going to take our ball tool and make sure it's in the center. And we're just going to push, push that slightly down into the face. You can even add like little dots, like make like a little like crown for her. But we're gonna keep it simple for the sake of this video. Perfect. So we're gonna take our our little, actually it's pretty welded on there. I don't even need to use the Sculpey Bacon Bond. Um, I think it's just really good. But what I want to do is give a little color. I wanna give a little color to her face. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to, um, okay, you know what, we'll use like an old car. So I have an old car here, any card, any paper would do. This is ColourPop, I got a recent delivery, um, um, yeah, got a recent delivery, so I have that card with me. Yeah, and then we're going to take our little bacon bond, just a little bit, you can smear it on there. I swear, I need to buy another one. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. That's a lot, that's a lot of bacon bond. A lot that we don't need. All right, sorry guys. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mixing that powder with the bacon bond and I'm gonna be coloring her up a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. And you know, you can always, um, I'm gonna be taking a little bit of this though and just slightly putting it right there in her cheeks there um, so yeah you can just clean this up if you need to right so we have some in her cheeks when I'm gonna take my finger like what I do with myself for makeup <laughs> and I'm just gonna like slightly rub it in very very gently Ooh, see how I got I messed up on the eye yeah just very 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 slightly And when this bakes, it's gonna look so cute. 
like a slight, slight blush. Beautiful. You could even paint the eyes blue and you can do all sorts of stuff. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mixing. So we're just gonna get color. I might need some more, some more pigment here. So let's do that. Okay. I'm gonna be, I want it really, really pigmented for her lips. And I feel like during the baking process, it's gonna bring out the color even more. So you can see that color, right? Very, very cool. And the more, the more powder, this is a chalk pastel, the more powder you add, um, the more, um, I would say a little easier to work with. But yeah, we're just gonna paint her lips. I'm gonna be very, very careful with this. We don't have to go too crazy with it, but let's just see how that looks. I just want her to have a really nice smile to define those lips. Anything you feel like you messed up on, you can always go back and clean it up. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now we have her lips on. We're gonna go get a Q-tip and clean our project up, up, up. So I do wanna go for that eye. See how easy that comes out? without distorting the piece. Gonna clean up her lips a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm gonna go in with the other side and make sure, make sure that we covered all of our bases. Alright, let's see. We're gonna get some more alcohol, dip that in there, and we are going to be just overall cleaning up the pendant. If you want, you could um you could add some glitter to her hair. Um you know, maybe you should. Uh, for the sake of the video, I think it'll be kind of fun to see. Um, I'm already seeing that braid is flat. I don't want it that flat, so I want it to kind of hug the pendant. And what the alcohol does is that it does um, remove any um, any fingerprints. So I've made pieces where I'll pinch it off early, but then leave, like not pinch it where I cut it off, and then I'll make like two little like berets over there um, to hold, like make it look like it's holding her hair. Very, very cute. Um, there's so much you can do with this. Um, you wanna make sure that your cabochon is nice and tight. Clean that up. So I am gonna go in, but on, I'm, I'm gonna go in with, uh, I have some glitter for her hair. Um, and I want it to be maybe this color. That might be too fall-ish. But I do have uh, maybe like a purple. Hmm. You know what? I should be safe than sorry. I'm gonna be safe than sorry. So, uh, what I'm gonna be doing is pretty much 
I'm just gonna be finding a soft glitter. This is perfect. I've used this in <clears throat> all of my projects. It's just a beautiful, beautiful glitter. Um, I'm gonna take some, say in this hand, because this is, my right is my dominant hand. Um, take a little bit out. Oh, look at that sparkle. I'm just gonna take it and then kind of like rub it in my fingers a bit so my fingers get a little apologize for all the the dirty hands all the clay and glue is on it but yeah so i'll just take it and disperse that on my finger and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to tap her hair so i'm going to do it and it, the glitter is going to come right off but it's not going to go on any of the other pendant it's not going to go um all over the pendant, I should say. It's just gonna go over her hair. And you know, after a while you keep doing it. Practice makes perfect. I don't wanna OD with the glitter, but yeah. Ooh, it was starting to look really, really nice. sure you get a little bit of the inside perfect wherever you don't finish just tap away and you're good okay I would say clean your hands at this point <laughs> clean your hands but um, it's okay if you can't so I'm gonna take my exacto knife now and it's good to use a, a surface like this because it doesn't cut into it um, it doesn't leave that many scratches, but it's not the best for working with clay. I'll just tell you that. So we're just going to be cutting around the piece. So let me just zoom in for you guys. I'm going to be cutting around the piece. want to be very careful not to cut her hair or any part of the um, piece if you if your piece is a little stuck you can just pull right and then cut off to make it a little easier for you nope we're gonna pull that set that aside bring this up and then you're at a better angle of cutting into it. Now I'm cutting at a slight, slight, slight angle because this is a thinner piece of the base clay. So do, and you can always shave a little more if you need to. But I'm leaving a little extra and I'll show you why. So this is our piece. See how there's a little extra here? That might be a little too much extra. That should be fine. So we're just gonna clean it up a little bit. Ooh, ooh, oh my gosh. Oh, gotta tighten it up. Okay. All right, so, so we have our pendant. Um, so you wanna be very gentle, but what I'm doing is I'm hugging the back so you see where those spaces are so I'm just pinching a little bit so I'm just gonna be bringing it in just a little bit you can actually even use like oh god I swear my dog's hair you can just oh and this is the back um, you can just like bring it in this way but you know what I'm just gonna be using my fingers for it um, just bring it in Just closing it in I just like making it a little tight like I said it doesn't have to be completely perfect I'm sure if you want it to be perfect it can just gonna take a little extra little extra work but you don't want to put any pressure on the face or anything like that because you don't want it to you know you don't want it to distort the face or the nose or all that beautiful work you've done in the beginning. 
right? So we're just bringing it around, taking that those edges that are in there and kind of hugging her hair with it. That's pretty much what we're doing. Okay. I notice this flower is a little off to the side. It might be because of the hair. So the great thing about clay is that you can always mold it to what you want, which is the awesome part. Oop. Oh my gosh. It's okay. You just see how that happened? You gotta be very, very careful. I just wanna roll her nose back up. So yeah, if you feel like your nose is just a little too flat, you can roll it up a bit. There we go. There we go, there we go. Let's see. I'm liking what I have so far. This is the back, and we can always sand down the back later for fingerprints. You can use alcohol now. I'm not really that picky. I, I like to think that this is art, and art is what you make it, and it's okay if it's not perfect. That's totally fine. Don't have to be perfect. What's perfect anyway, right? Right. Okay, let's just make sure we have enough pigment for her lips. Beautiful. Let's go back and fix it up. There you go. Cute. All right, so I think we're done here. You want to put this on the surface and this particular clay uh, for Sculpey um, 3, it's 275. So for a piece like this, probably I would bake it for about 30 minutes, about 30 minutes. And I like working with crystals because um, a lot of them you can put in, in the oven and they can withstand the heat. So that's really, really good. Um, really, really good. But, all right, so I'll come back when she's all done. So this is our piece. She is so stunning. Oh my gosh, she is gorgeous. Look at those lips. That's my doggy, he's coming. Look how cute she is. You can just leave her just like that. This is the back, we'll probably sand that down. But that's no fun in showing you. Um, but yeah, look how that sparkle just shows up in her hair and that's just slight glitter. Remember I put it in my palm and you don't want to sprinkle it all over. Well, you can, it's your, your work. But um, I just think the sparkles on her hair doesn't take away from the color. It's just really cute and the cabochon here and the, the other cabochon here just gives it like a whole little pizzazz to it. And that druzy, that stone held up very, very well. Uh, hopefully my camera would focus, but it held up very well in the oven for 25 minutes. Um, no damage then. So yeah. So now we're gonna go and glaze her. Um, I normally probably wouldn't glaze her. I just like the way she is. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, for the sake of the video to show you, um, oh, sorry. Um, I'm gonna be using Sculpey uh, Gloss Glaze. Sorry for the glare, Gloss Glaze. Um, I think this runs for about $5. And we are going to be glazing um, our little misses over here. So, yeah, so let's go do that. I actually have a brush and it's a, a makeup brush, an e.l.f. makeup brush. <laughs> I just find that sometimes makeup brushes have like the softest of bristles and I have so many of them so might as well, might as well use it. So we're going to take an, a little bit of this, goes a long way. You don't need a lot, at which I think this is probably will cover the entire pendant, honestly. Um, and we are going to be just slightly painting her. I'll start off with the flower. 
careful you don't want to hit the, the little cabochon in the middle. Get the leaves. You could even not even gloss the leaves. You can just um, leave it by itself, which is cool. Um, I really have to be careful because this stuff, like, is just, just have to like dab it and then. If your pendant is warm, it will um, it will dry even quicker. So just keep that in mind. Um, yep. I don't know about her face if I want to glaze her face, but we'll just glaze the entire pendant for fun. Let's just do that. I like the way the blush came out too. This side could have been a little bit better, but. It's pretty nonetheless. I'm pleased with it. If you decided to bake your pendant um, without glitter, what you could do is um, always add the glitter after. Just, um, oh, that's beautiful. You can just um, add this, gloss it, and then add the glitter, and then gloss it again. So no harm, no foul, you know, you can always, that's why I say like clay and, and working with clay is very, very forgiving. Um, yeah. And that's just a light one layer glaze. You can glaze it again if you want. Um, but I'm not too picky. I think that's pretty enough. So yeah. So yep, yeah, so she's gonna, she's, she was done, she's a little warm, so I can probably start with um, adding the back. Now, um, I just want to show you a sample real quick of some of the other pendants that I've made. So I've made this one, this was when I was first starting to make different pendants. Um, these are really good earrings by the way, they come out so pretty. Um, but yeah, so this is a sample of how you can like add um, to like embed it and then add a, a charm. But I find that it's like very wobbly, like not as stable as E6000 and um, a bale. So that's one example. This is another example of a girl that I had made. Um, this one came out really, I think really beautiful. Um, but the problem lies with this one is this. I'll probably do like a whole my mistakes video, but this could really, look at that, it could really scratch you. So you always wanna be careful. Um, once that clay hardens, if you have any like jagged pieces or edges of hair, it looks very cute, but you don't want them to stick out because it really could hurt like you saw yourself or scratch yourself. Um, but this example, if you can add jewels in the eyes and make your own stuff. Um, work for you this is when I was trying to trying to define the nose I was very new and not as careful as I was with this one um, this one I just didn't do it all these two are both from the same face mold that I used but yeah just quick tip um, you can also add like little charms like yeah on the bottom so you can just stick eye pins and then add like chain and stuff but yeah those are two samples um, for this one I didn't feel like we needed to do that only because it's just such a, an elongated piece um, so yeah and she's pretty much almost already dry so I'm taking some E6000 this is the best adhesive glue that I find that works really well um, very sturdy with pieces you don't want to squeeze too much if you have a big tube I actually like buying the smaller tube um, because I find it like the cap and all that like gets hard and stuff like very quickly like the glue gets trapped in the big one so you always have to like constantly um, you know kind of like be careful not to overspill, always clean it out, that kind of thing. But yeah, you just want to make sure that your bale is centered. I usually kind of line it with the cabochon or the bridge of the nose, like right there. And then you're going to press down, press down, down. Right. 
I don't worry too much about the glue in the back, just how it looks in the front. <coughs> and we're gonna let that dry. This, this takes a little while to dry. Um, you have to be really careful too. You don't wanna touch it. There's some warnings um, on this. Um, uh, so vapor is harmful. Um, at first I was so afraid I would wear like a face mask, which is probably what I should do, but um, just be careful with this. Um, some people are more sensitive uh, than others <coughs> when working with like harsh and, and chemicals such as that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to let that dry, but while that's drying, I have a simple bead over here that I got at Michael's. and. Pretty much what I'm just gonna be doing, very simple. Um, I like to add a little, a little, little bling, little bling to this. Um, so I'll probably add it like right here, but I don't wanna, it's not stable enough. So I guess, I guess maybe we'll wait. Blow on it to give it a little, uh, you know. Actually, you know what? No, we're not gonna do that. We'll just keep it on this because this might be too big for it. Okay, so let's just do that. We're just closing this up. Closing it up. You could use a smaller ring. I would probably use a smaller ring because um, this is not as stable as I want it to be. But, well, we'll just make it work for now. For now, it's not the perfect, not the best, but we're gonna be trying. Look how cute this is. Imagine this was just a cute little choker. Look how cute that would be. Oh, I should sell them for like a dollar, you know, two dollars. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it's not done drying, but we can start by putting our I like these bales I found them on Amazon they were like a hundred for um, I think like seven dollars very very good very good bales um, and you're just gonna close that up while it's still drying I actually added, this is my chain, I actually added, if you want, you know, to make a piece a little longer, you can just add more chain to it, but originally it came up to this length, but yeah, <clears throat> so we're just going to lock it right here, and that's pretty much it, I mean, I'll probably fix this, so when I make the intro to this video, you kind of see maybe what I would do or how I could display this. If not, I'll probably just take it all together, but sometimes this could look really, really cute, like on top, like just to like pizzazz it a little bit, but yeah. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to, that this video was helpful to you and I will see you in my next video.